friends today we are going to discuss about the deformation in composite or compound bar so let's talk about the definition of composite or compound bars it is defined like this the composite of compound bars when two or more than two bars made up of different materials are subjected to the combined load and undergo same deformation the combination of bar is called as composite bar so now you have to understand in this situation we have two or more than two bars so we can have two bars or more than two bars and these bars are made up of different materials the combination of two or more than two bars are subjected to a combined load and bars are going to undergo the same deformation okay so such combination is called as composite bars if you see here this is the case one we have got three bars and all of these three bars are having same length but let me keep this end of the bars as fixed while these ends of the bar are connected to each other so we have connected these ends of the bar all together and we are going to apply a combined load on it so such situation is called as a composite bar or compound bar so here if you see that we have got three bars of same length each of the bar are having same length and they are collectively subjected to a combined load p due to this load all these three bars will be deformed uniformly so deformation in the bar 1 bar 2 bar 3 are going to be same so this is a case where all three bars are having same length this is the first example we have seen if you see the second example here we have got three bars of different length the bar 1 here we have this is bar 2 and this is bar 3 so bar 1 2 3 they are having different different length so the one end of the bar here is fixed and while the second end of the bar are connected to each other and we are going to apply a combined load p over here so all these three bars are going to undergo same deformation so they shall be undergoing the same deformation when the load is going to act on them like this in this case also the deformation in the each bar are going to be same and here also you'll be having same deformation so delta l in each bars are going to be same right and here also delta l that is deformation in the length are going to be same on each and every bar such condition when a combined load is going to act on the combination of bars and all the bars are going to undergo same deformation together it is called as composite or compound bar so compound or composite bar satisfy the following condition the first condition is the total load that is p must be equal to load taken by bar 1 that is p1 plus load on bar 2 that is p2 plus load on bar 3 that is p3 so that will be continuing depending upon how many bars we are having and the second condition is the deformation in each bar is going to be same so the total deformation that is delta l is same in case of all three bars means total deformation is same as deformation in the bar 1 and that is equal to deformation in the bar 2 and that is equal to deformation in the bar 3 it depends upon how many bars we are using so these two conditions must be satisfied in order to call a given assembly as composite or compound assembly of bars okay so based on this we'll see some examples so let's solve an example based on a composite bar we can see here steel rod of 30 mm diameter is enclosed coaxially within a hollow copper tube of external diameter 50 mm and thickness 5 mm the combined assembly is subjected to an axial pull of 45,000 Newton. If the length of each bar is 150 mm and modulus of velocity of steel is 210 GPA, copper is 110 GPA, then we have to find the strains and the stresses in the rod and the tube. Okay, the question is something like this. We have got a steel rod and we have, we have got a copper tube. So the steel rod is having diameter 30 mm while copper tube has external diameter 50 mm and the thickness of 5 mm so for copper tube the outer diameter is going to be 50 mm and the inner diameter is going to be so 50 minus 10 that is 40 mm you can easily find out the inner diameter of copper tube okay and they have also given us the length of each as 150 mm so we are going to subject the combined assembly into the axial pull of 4500 newtons so we are going to so this is i have taken the sectional view of the combined assembly 
and we are going to subject this combined assembly into an axial pull of 4500 newton like this here also we have got the p so like this it is going to act so the outer section what i have shown is a copper tube and the inner section is a steel rod of diameter 30 mm if you read the question we have to find out the stresses and strains in each rods okay so let me first write down the data so in data we have got the total load that is p equals 4500 newtons the next part is we've got length so length in the sense we've got length of steel as well as length of copper both are same so it is a composite assembly and that is equal to 150 mm both copper tube and steel rod having same length that is 150 mm and uh, we also have uh, the diameters so diameters of steel is 30 mm while diameter of copper that is outer diameter 50 mm and inner diameter of copper as 40 mm what else we have got here we have got modulus of velocities so so that is for steel is 210 gpa that is it is in gpa so we write into 10 raised to 3 mpa and mpa is nothing but newtons per mm square please remember similarly for copper it is 110 gps so straight away i can write down 110 into 10 raised to 3 mpa or newtons per mm square both are same so we got all the data is available with us now there's a combined load of 45000 newton acting on the assembly and the entire assembly will be deformed uniformly or we can say that the deformation in the entire assembly is going to be same so the elongation in copper tube as well as the elongation in the steel rod is going to be same so it is a composite assembly so we have here two conditions that is overall load is the load taken by steel plus load taken by copper that is the one condition we got so this will give you p that is overall load so by basic definition of stresses we know that the stress is load per unit area of cross section so if i take steel stress in the steel is going to be load taken by steel by area of cross section of steel so from here you will be getting that load taken by steel is nothing but stress in the steel times area of cross section of the steel this is a very important result so based on this particular result i can write down here as the load on the steel is going to be stress in the steel times area of the steel similarly by using same convention load taken by the copper tube is stress developed in the copper tube times area of cross section of copper tube so this is one very important condition we have and the second important condition is the elongations are going to be same in both the members so it is delta l in the steel equals delta l in the copper tube so we also know that by hooke's law delta l is nothing but load into length divided by area of cross sections times young's modulus so this is also an important expression that is from hooke's law okay now by using this condition that is delta l equal to pl by ae i can write down that is delta l in the steel is load taken by steel length of steel rod divided by area of cross section of steel times young's modulus of steel equals to delta l in the copper that is load taken by copper times length of the copper tube area of cross section of copper tube Young's modulus of copper tube. So, for composite assembly of bars, we are going to use these two results in order to solve the problem. Okay. So, these two results has to be remembered properly. That is, total load is the sum of load shared by individual members, and deformation in the each member is going to be same as far as it is a composite assembly. So, load is nothing but stress into area, and deformation is nothing but load into length divided by area of cross section times young's modulus okay so if we will solve these two equations equation one and equation two we shall obtain the required value of stresses and strains in the rod okay so let's if you see here in the first equation we have got the value of overall load and we have got the area cross section area of steel and copper 
we don't know the value of trusses so we shall be getting one equation where sigma s and sigma c are variables that is trusses in each components are the variables of so one equation in the second equation if you see that we have got load over area so if if i combine this load over area this particular portion and here if i see in the right hand side this particular portion so this load over area is nothing but stress so this is going to be stress in the steel and this is going to be stress in the copper so in this equation also we got two variables that is stress in the steel and stress in the copper remaining values are known to us so we have two equations and we have two variables that is sigma s and sigma c so by using these two equations i can solve fine so let me first simplify the equation one so what equation one will give me so let me first simplify equation one if i simplify equation one i'll be getting sigma s sigma s times area of steel so area of steel nothing but pi by 4 into diameter of steel and diameter of steel is 30 mm so 30 square plus sigma c that is plus in the copper times we have area of copper so area of copper is nothing but pi by 4 minus outer diameter of copper is 50 so 50 square and the inner diameter of copper is 40 to so 40 square and this whole value is equal to p p is nothing but 45000 newton so if you simplify this equation if you substitute the corresponding values you shall get sigma x plus sigma c equal to 63.66 similarly now i'm going to consider equation number two so here i'm going to write down ps by ass sigma s from equation two i shall get sigma s that is ps by as is sigma s into ls by es so ls is nothing but 150 mm and es is 210 into 10 raised to 3 now sigma c because pc by ac is sigma c times lc is again 150 divided by 110 times 10 raised to 3 one very simple note is there since ls and lc are same we can cancel them out but i have just written here just to understand that if they are not equal we have to put the values correspondingly so from here 150 150 get cancelled out from both sides 10 raised to 3 10 raised to 3 will be cancelled out so from here so you'll get sigma s as nothing but 210 divided by 110 sigma c and that is nothing but 1.909 sigma c so we have got now this is second uh, fourth equation now okay now we are going to use equation number three and equation number four and we'll find out the value of sigma so i can substitute the value of sigma s from this equation over here so from equation three and four we shall get so from here we have sigma s plus sigma c 63.66 but sigma s is nothing but 1.909 so 1.909 plus one is going to be 2.909 2.909 sigma c equals 63.66 and if i further simplify this from here therefore i'll get the value of sigma c as 21.883 this is i got the value of stress in the copper tube but we know that stress in the steel is 1.909 therefore stress in the steel is 1.909 stress in the copper and therefore stress in the steel is going to be 41.775 newtons per mm square now we got stress in the copper as well as stress in the steel now therefore strains how to find strains now very simple strain in the steel is equal to stress in the steel divided by modulus of velocity in the steel that is young's modulus of the steel so this is nothing but 41.775 divided by 210 into 10 raised to 3 so it is going to be 0.199 into 10 raised to minus 3 so this is strain in the steel similarly we have strain in copper as stress in copper divided by modulus of velocity of copper so the stress in the copper is 28.883 divided by modulus of velocity of copper is uh, 110 into 10 raised to 3 so it is going to be 0 0.262 so this way you can find out the stresses and strain in the copper tube as well as steel rod when they are subjected to an actual load of 45000 newton okay thank you very much